The eastern cottontail rabbit is a species that's usually out active around dawn and dusk times of the day. While I have seen plenty of eastern cottontails throughout all the times of the day, they seem to come out more out in the open later in the evening, and that's exactly when I saw this one. Right on the single palm frond, there are two insects that are not very closely related to each other together. This green lacewing, which is called Chrysopodes colaris, called that because it doesn't have a common name, so it's just referred to by its Latin name, and this palmetto tortoise beetle, which is a small black beetle with a round, tough shell that only lives on and around areas with short palm trees like this one. The spotted winged grasshopper is named that because of the small white spots on the wings as you can see on this individual. But besides those white spots, they are actually uh, covered in a distinctive pattern with a striped abdomen and a very recognizable zigzag shape on the thorax. This is actually a brown morph right here, but we also get green morphs. And I'll put a picture of what one of those looks like. This individual is an adult, and I don't believe they get much bigger than this. Well, it's impossible to know what species this is, it's in the genus Selenops, or the crescent-eyed spiders. Unfortunately, this individual is missing a leg, but overall you can see that Selenops look very flat, hence the nickname Flatty. The flatness is useful on hiding on walls and in small cracks in trees and rocks. From far away, I thought I had seen a box turtle until I walked up to it and noticed that this was a very small young gopher tortoise. This was my first time seeing a gopher tortoise anything smaller than a foot long. It's normally pretty rare to see a young tortoise because they're a lot more secretive than the adults. Since they're so much more vulnerable, usually they resort to hiding in the underbrush or in other gopher tortoise burrows using the camouflage of their yellowish colored shells. Speaking of gopher tortoises, this is a very relatively large individual who has just started on a new burrow. Now of course he had to stop right when I started recording, but before I started recording video, he was actively digging, raising his head up and down to check around the area, and you can see it's pretty fresh, it's not even a foot deep yet. Here is one of South Florida's most easily recognizable birds of prey, the swallow-tailed kite, named for that highly forked and long tail. This one's doing its normal hunting behavior, flying around in circles, taking the thermals and looking for food. Although this one's a lot closer to the ground than I usually see them, giving us some really good views of the white belly, contrasting with the black. At first glance, these dragonflies right here might not look like anything special, but in fact, they are part of yet another scientific discovery made here on the channel. These are garnet gliders, a neotropical species of glider found in Central America, Mexico, and South America, and the Caribbean, with one very small isolated population in central Florida, and only known from South Florida as a vagrant species from the Caribbean, well, until now. In the span of two days, I've found two big swarms, about 20-something of these guys, in completely different parts and habitats of Palm Beach County. I was lucky enough to have one female land for me, showing all of the identification tips of Garnet Glider, that distinctive abdomen shape where it tapers at the base and gets thicker at the end. The abdomen being plain with no black markings on it, just orange. And that distinctive marking at the base of the wings, which only has darkness going about halfway down the wing. Of course, all of the individuals and swarms that I've seen are on iNaturalist right now. And this is an extremely important step in proving that garnet gliders are indeed a common and sustainable breeding species in South Florida rather than just a vagrant, which is what they previously thought before. The garnet glider and overall members of the genus Tarifola in general are an extremely under-researched group of species because of their isolated and uh, neotropical habitat preference. But my discovery of this species in urban South Florida might be extremely important for research in the future. In the middle of all these common Florida shorebirds, like the like lesser yellow legs and solitary sandpiper, is one European vagrant called a ruff. It sticks out like a sore thumb from all these other birds because of its size, the roughed up feathers, 
and of course those bright reddish orange legs. This bird is called the ruff because males during the breeding season develop a large patch of feathers around their neck, usually colored in exotic ways to attract females. During the non-breeding season though, these guys just look like your ordinary colliderous sandpiper. I know this may sound ironic, but they are quite a common vagrant. Since they are highly migratory, many end up all around both the east and west coasts of North America every year.